Welcome, dear friends, uh, to our second Sunday of Easter worship. I'm Pastor Dan Schneider, and I'm privileged to be the pastor at St. John Lutheran Church School and Child Care here in Glendale, Wisconsin, and to share this day of worship with you. As we continue in this Easter season, we say, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And as we walk through this Easter season with our risen Lord, guided by his word, we're going to be walking through the writings of the Apostle St. Peter, specifically his first letter, which are the regularly appointed lessons uh, during this Easter season. Week to week, we're going to examine the Spirit's direction for our lives under the theme, Resurrection Realignments. Because Jesus rose from the dead, he realigns our worldview, that is how we see ourselves, who we are, why we are, and where we're going, and how we're to view and interact, interact with each other. Jesus also realigns our daily living as we submit to his direction and as we look to him for guidance. And the letter of the Apostle St. Peter is especially appropriate for our current situation as it was written for a people who were going through a time of suffering. As we gather today, if you are a guest with us for worship and you don't have a church home, I would love to serve any spiritual needs that you might have, and you can contact me by email at dan.schneider at stjohnglendale.com or by phone at 414-614-7126. If you're looking for a great school for your children or know somebody who needs a great school for their children, that will assist them in developing academically and physically, relationally and spiritually, uh, we would love to serve your fam family. And you can find out more by contacting our principal, Jennifer Comfort, at 414-352-4150. Our child care has also reopened, especially to serve those who are working for us during this safer at home time. If you know someone who is in need of child care, please contact Tony Nelk, our child care director, at 414-352-4176. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Join me in inviting our risen Lord to realign our being and doing by the power of his word. We pray together. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, with hands and feet, voice and presence, you demonstrated the reality of your resurrection to your disciples. Confirm my trust in your forgiveness and resurrection life, that in every trial I might be faithful to you, rejoicing in my eternal inheritance. Amen. Please join in singing the first three stanzas of In Christ Alone.
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We are gathered in the powerful name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To God's elect, exiles who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkled with his blood. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that we were redeemed from the empty way of life, handed down to us from our ancestors. But with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect, he was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for our sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him. So our faith and hope are in God. Please join us as we enter into God's presence for a time of confession. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, the Holy Spirit through St. Peter wrote that God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. We know that when we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to God, our Father. Merciful God, I confess that I am sinful and need your grace. I have sinned against you in my thinking, my speaking, in what I have done, and by the good I neglect to do. I have not wholeheartedly loved you. I have not loved my neighbors as myself. Let the sacrificial blood of your son, Jesus Christ, the innocent lamb who died for me, cover me in your mercy. Fill me with your spirit so that I daily love and serve you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, hear this good news. Jesus himself bore your sins in his body on the cross so that you might die to sin and live for righteousness, for by his wounds you have been healed. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have raised me to new life with my Lord Jesus Christ by resurrection faith. I have the new birth into a living hope and the promised inheritance of eternal life. May my life reflect the new identity and security you have given me as I testify to your grace in my life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first word of God from Holy Scripture, which we turn to today, is a word from Acts chapter 5. It points us to the transformational 
character of the resurrection, that those disciples who were hiding on that first Easter Sunday were now bold to proclaim the name of the risen Christ. This occurred after uh, the apostles had been thrown in jail. Then someone came and said, look, the men you put in jail are standing in the temple courts teaching the people. So at that, the captain went with his officers and he brought the apostles. They did not use force because they feared that the people would stone them. The apostles were brought in and they were made to appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said, yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this blood. Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God rather than human beings. For the God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead, whom you killed by hanging him on a cross. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior, that he might bring Israel to repentance and forgive their sins. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading, the focus of our sermon meditation today are the opening words of uh, Peter's first epistle from chapter 1, verses 3 to 9. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he's given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. Kept in heaven for you, who through faith, are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. Now these have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We turn now to the gospel lesson, which occurs on Easter evening as Jesus meets his disciples in the upper room, as John recorded, records it in his 20th chapter. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and he stood among them and he said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed, and the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other told, disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands, reach out your hand, and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. And then Jesus told him, because you've seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please join in singing our hymn of the day, The Lamb.
Before we do that, we're going to pause and have a children's lesson. And so I'd especially invite uh, children of all ages just to reflect on me a little bit as we prepare um, to uh, hear God's word. And I'm sure that uh, every single one of us at one time or another received one of these. And, and if there are children who are with us today, I'd invite you to invite your parents, uh, if they can find it, to uh, uh, let you see your your birth certificate. And what does a birth certificate record? Well, it records a number of things. It records the date of your birth. It records uh, the place of your birth. And it also records your name, the name your mother and father gave to you. And it records the name of your mother and the name of your father. All of those things are on a birth certificate. And, and, it, and it tells you what family you belong to. Well, today we hear from the Apostle St. Peter that just like we had a birth certificate that identified the family we belong to, God has uh, caused us by faith to come into his family. Now, for some of us, we count that as maybe the day that we were baptized, and then our baptismal certificate would become that birth certificate. For the others of us, maybe we believed before we were baptized, and so that would be the day that God claimed us as his very own child. And just like in your uh, physical birth, you didn't have a choice about the day or the time or, in fact, the fact that you were going to be here, and God tells us in his word that he chooses us. Even before we were born, he saw us. Just like your mom and dad, before they saw you, knew that they were going to have you because your mom was pregnant and she was growing and your mom's belly was getting bigger until the day that you were born. They knew that you were coming and God knew that you were going to be a part of his family. And once you're a part of his family, what do you know? Well, you've got somebody who takes care of you, like a mom and dad will provide food and clothes and, and shelter for you and and, and they'll help you with your homework. And some of you need a lot of help from mom and dad because you're not able to be with your teachers. They're with you when you're scared to help comfort you. And, and they're going to be with you, you know, every day of your life. And their thoughts are with you even when you can't see them. Well, all those things are true about our Heavenly Father. That once we're a part of his family, he, as Jesus has promised, as our risen Lord, is always with us. And that even when we can't see him, maybe even when we can't feel him, we know that his eyes are on us, that he loves and that he cares for us and that he'll be with us every day of our life. So let's thank him for that today. I invite you to pray after me in an echo prayer. Dear Jesus, dear Jesus, thank you for coming to my world. Thank you for coming to my world for helping me. For helping me by the power of your spirit by the power of your spirit to trust and believe to trust and believe that you lived for me that you lived for me you died for me you died for me you rose for me you rose for me and you are with me every day and you are with me every day thank you for making me thank you for making me a child of your heavenly father a child of your heavenly Father. Through the faith and trust I have in you. Through the faith and trust I have in you. Amen. Amen. Please now join us in singing the Lamb.
Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our dear Lord and our Savior Jesus. Amen. As we gather uh, uh, during this Easter season, we will be following uh, the lessons from 1 Peter. We've altered them a little bit from the regular lectionary, uh, but we will be in 1 Peter as the regular lectionary is during this time. And, and our theme is resurrection realignment today, especially that one of the ways our, uh, our hearts and minds are realigned is through the new identity. And with that identity comes security. So let's um, enter into God's word and, and um, let God speak to our hearts today. I'd like you to think all about um, this season, which is a time often for realignments because the potholes that have uh, developed over the winter are just getting filled. And, and because of those potholes and the other uh, rough rides that we've had during the winter season, very often we have to take our cars in for an alignment so that they'll ride straight again, so that they'll be able to safely convey us from place to place. And, and as we enter into this Easter season, we know that that's one of the things God loves to do with his children is to constant, constantly bring us uh, again into alignment with uh, a life that brings us fullness and peace. Jesus said we, that he, he came so that we might have a full life, life lived to the very fullest. And, and so um, as we do that, we recognize that one of the realignments that often happens, uh, especially through the resurrection, is that we have our worldview shaped by the person of Jesus and especially by his life, death and resurrection and by the word that he gives us as he walks with us through this world. So as we come to the letter of the apostle St. Peter, let's uh, let his word speak once again to us to realign our hearts in the joy and promise of his resurrected life. The text begins with these words, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he's given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Peter is uh, one of the only two people who uses the phrase born again. Now, he doesn't use that phrase here, but a little bit later in his uh, first chapter, but he does speak about the new birth. Um, and that new birth is a gift of God. And it's a gift of God that comes because of the faith that he plants in our hearts. Peter, uh, a little later in this chapter, puts it this way. Since you've been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and abiding word of God. You and I uh, come into this time of resurrection realignment because Somebody shared with us the good news, the good word uh, that Jesus lived and died and rose for us. And as we take that into our hearts, as by the Spirit, he leads us to believe and trust in Jesus, we are born into a new family and we receive a new hope. We have this precious gift because of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, the other place you'll find the words born again is in John chapter 3, when Nicodemus comes to see Jesus at night. And Jesus says, except you be born again, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Unless we think that somehow this new birth was something of our doing, the Apostle St. John also in his um, first chapter of his gospel uh, put it this way. He said, to all who receive Jesus, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of a human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. You and I have uh, had God through somebody's mouth or maybe through our eyes as we have read, come to know the good news about Jesus and, and, and the spirit has birthed that faith in our hearts that makes us children of the heavenly father. And as those children of the Heavenly Father, we know that um, we have a new identity, an identity that's given. 
As we think about new identities, we might think about this fella. His name is Jay Spates, uh, and he, he recently discovered that he is a royal. You see, he took a DNA test, and the results popped up that he was of royal descent. The funny thing is that Spates grew up in New Jersey. He lived in an apartment. He doesn't even own a car, but now he's a prince. National Public Radio, in one of their reports, indicated that he visited his long-lost country, and he was welcomed home as royalty. Another paper, paper reported, when he first arrived, he saw what looked like a festival, hundreds of people dancing and playing instruments and singing. It took him several minutes to realize it was a welcome party for him. Here's an excerpt from his interview. Steve Inskeep, the host, says, Royal DNA? Mr. Spates is a prince in the small West African country of Benin. His family had been trying to learn the African side of their lineage for decades, and at last he had an answer. After a DNA test, he found himself being related to the royal family of Benin. And so naturally, he got on a plane. Spate says, next thing you know, I'm in Benin, crowned as a prince. It was just that easy, Inskeep says. The royal family prepared a festival for his homecoming. They hung up banners. They held a parade. And because the prince had no experience with princing, the royal family sent him to a so-called prince school. Spates goes on. What may have added to the intensity of emotion was that it was my father's birthday when I landed. And to land there on my father's birthday was just unbelievable. And I tell you, my father's presence was with me. You and I have been declared royalty. And it's not come naturally through our DNA, but through the grace and love that we have been shown in, in Jesus Christ, our risen King. And because he rose from the dead, you and I can say, I am a child of that one true King. And you and I know the way that this king was crowned for us first as he bore our sins on the cross for all the times when we disregarded the royal heritage that we have, the precious truth that we're children of the heavenly father, valued, appreciated, and given worth by him. For all the times when we have disregarded the value of another human being by what we said or what we've done, Jesus wore a crown, was crowned as king for us as he died for those sins on the cross. But in order that you and I might know that this is a sure and certain confidence that we have this new identity, he rose from the dead. And he is described in the book of Revelation as a king, as the lion of Judah in these words from Revelation 5. One of the elders said to me, don't weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. And, and what um, that elder said to John is Jesus is the one who sits on David's throne, just as God had promised David in the forever kingdom, which he won by his life, death, and resurrection. And everyone who is identified as a child king has what that king gives, described in these words and in the introduction to First Peter. He describes us as those who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkled with his blood. Grace and peace are ours in abundance. God knew you were going to exist before your mom and dad did. God chose you to be a part of his family. You know, Jesus said to, that to his disciples on the night that he was betrayed. You didn't choose me, but I chose you to go and bear much fruit. And that choosing became real in our lives through the work of the Holy Spirit who sanctifies us and makes us holy as he brings us to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus so that his blood covers, is sprinkles all of our sins in God's sight. 
and calls us into a life of obedience in response to God's grace and peace in our lives. And this is the secure, the, the identity that we have and the benefits of that identity that leads also to a new security. The security that you and I have in this identity is because of whose child we are. Peter goes on to write, and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that's ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief and all kinds of trials. But these have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus is revealed. One of the pictures in the scripture of our identity and the results that come from it is the idea that we have been no, not by nature, God's children, but we've been adopted through faith into the family of God. And when one is adopted, the Bible says we have the full rights of children. That means we're heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. And we have an inheritance. Now, one of the reasons that was important for the people that Peter was writing to is that they were aliens or strangers in the land that they had settled in Asia Minor. And they had left their homes, and that means they left their property because of persecution in Rome. And, and, and so they might have wondered, well, gee, do I have an inheritance yet? And, and Peter says, yes, you do. Through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, you are an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus. But it's not just that future inheritance that you have. You also have the presence of Jesus Christ in your life. Even as you're going through the kind of trials you're experiencing now, he attends your way and he assures you that you have all the blessings of being his family, all the attention of Heavenly Father. And in the scriptures, time and time again, it shares promises like these. Promises that help us to know that our life in Christ is secure. We are forever free from condemnation because Jesus took the condemnation for us. We are assured that even in the midst of troubles that all things work together for good for those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. We know that Satan nor anybody else can lay a charge that would condemn us in God's sight because Jesus has fully paid for our sins. And so we know that we're never separated from the love of God. He walks with us every day. We've been established, anointed, and sealed by God, and our life is hidden with Christ in God, confident that the good work that God has begun in us will be perfected in his time and in his way. And we know that while we might be temporary citizens on earth, we are permanent citizens of heaven. And so we can, like we heard in the first lesson, have with the apostles a spirit, not of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind, finding grace and mercy for every time of our need, knowing that we have been born of God and given that new identity, the evil one cannot touch us. The security that we have is the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Pastor and author J.R. Vassar writes about ministering in Burma and coming upon a broken Buddha. And this is what he writes. One day we were pr prayer walking through a large Buddhist temple when I witnessed something heartbreaking. A large number of people, very desperate and poor, were bowing down to a large golden Buddha. They were stuffing what seemed to be the last of their money into the treasury box, and they were kneeling in prayer, hoping to secure a blessing from the Buddha. On the other side of the large golden idol, scaffolding had been built. The Buddha, you see, had begun to deteriorate, and a group of workers was diligently repairing the broken Buddha. I took in the scene. Broken people were bowing down to a broken Buddha, asking the broken Buddha to fix their broken lives while someone else fixed the broken Buddha. The insanity and despair of it all hit me. We're no different from them. We are broken people looking to other broken people often to fix our broken lives. We're glory deficient people looking to other glory deficient people to supply us with glory. 
looking to other people to provide for us. What they lack themselves is a fool's errand. It is futile to look to other glory hungry people to fully satisfy our glory hunger and doing so can only leave our souls empty. But you and I know that our security is sure. We heard it in the gospel lesson because Jesus rose from the dead. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And he demonstrated it in very real ways to his disciples to let us know that our security is sure because of the power of his resurrection. And with us every day, the Apostle St. Paul said that all scripture is written, uh, first of all, to make us wise for salvation. And then he says, uh, all scripture is God breathed and written for our correction and training in righteousness so that we might be thoroughly equipped for every good work. In other words, Jesus, the risen Jesus attends our way. First of all, to show us the way home to heaven. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And, and when you and I are connected to his life, then we have that life. And we know that our path is certain. But along that way, we need help, encouragement, and strength. And so Jesus gives us his word to us to provide us that owner's manual for life, to get those principles that help us to be physically healthy, to know how to handle the gifts that he places into our hands, to bless the relationships of marriage and parents and children and friends, and, and to, to bless us as we work with uh, our co-workers and much more. And so today, Jesus invites us to once again, when we face the damage that the potholes of this life are brought into our world, to come to him so that he might shift our direction so that he might align our hearts and lives to his word, to have that vision that he has for us. So let's, um, let's pray about that. Lord Jesus, we thank and praise you that you entered this world so that we could have a new identity that's grounded in your life, death, and resurrection and connects us to the eternal family that your father has called us into. And and we thank you for the security it gives us even when we're going through challenging times. You walk alongside us as our good shepherd to bless us with your presence. Open our ears and hearts to your leading and guiding as we make our journey through this world. In your name we pray. Amen. Now may that peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in your Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. As we respond to God's word, let's confess our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I, I believe, believe in, in God, God, the Father, Father Almighty, maker Lord, of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We also offer him the gift of our lives, our time, talent, and treasure. And we're encouraged uh, to praise him in these words from Exodus chapter 15. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. He is my God and I will praise him. My father's God and I will exalt him. We pray over the offering of our time, talent, and treasures. Let us pray. Jesus, Jesus you, you have, have revealed, revealed yourself to me so that I trust you like Thomas as my Lord and my God. Receive these gifts as a sign of the depth of my faith and my commitment to lead others to that same confident faith. Amen. Let's go to God's throne of grace in our individual petitions and prayers. Hosanna, Jesus, risen Lord of love, sustain with your loving care the lives of those challenged by illness, surgeries, and rehabilitation. 
enabling them to be your witnesses even in suffering, especially Todd, Elizabeth, Pat, and those we name before you in our hearts. Bless the medical team serving Ed and Judy Weber's nephew, Joel Dahlstrom, as he battles melanoma, and Lois Bowen as she recuperates from a stroke. Walk with Clara McKinney as she prepares to come home to your presence and give strength to her family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all those who are serving as first responders in our communities and with those serving in our military. Fill the men and women who protect our lives in our communities and nation with your loving presence. Walk with them in their callings. And we especially have lift up Chrissy Stuhlmacher as she is deployed to serve us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hosanna, Jesus, risen Lord of love. We rejoice that you have blessed one of our child care families, Jenny and Chris Thede, with the gift of a new life in the birth of a daughter, Lily. Bless Jenny and Lily with healing and strength and enable Lily to find her identity in the new birth of faith so that she might share with us in our living hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hosanna, Jesus, risen Lord of love. We thank you for blessing husbands and wives to live empowered by your love in their marriages. We rejoice with Emma Jean and Richard Mandel in 26 years of marriage, with Mark and Heather Corpola in six years of marriage, and with Julie and David Reindel with 19 years of marriage. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to enrich their love for one another, along with all of our marriages. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hosanna, Jesus, risen Lord of love, let your resurrection life, the fruit of your love, bring comfort and peace to all those who grieve, especially Betty Loki and her family at the death of her husband, Herb. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Hosanna, Jesus, risen Lord of love, continue to lead us in word and deed, by our witness, to share your truth and life with our friends, relatives, neighbors, and associates in our Glen Mac River Fox Bay Shore Waukee community. Lead many in our communities who in this time may feel isolated and alone to be led to the joy that comes from the identity and security your love brings to them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Now that you've purified yourselves by obeying the truth, have sincere love for each other. Love one another deeply from the heart. We will, for we have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give to each of you his peace. Amen. Please join us in our closing verses, two verses of Crown Many Crowns.
Thanks for joining us for worship. We're so glad that you could be with us, and we'd be privileged if you'd join us over the next uh, uh, rest of the weeks in the Easter season as we continue the series on 1 Peter. As we uh, plan for the future, I'd like you to know that we're going to try to get, uh, over the next couple of weeks, the Thursday morning and Sunday morning Bible classes restarted, and uh, we'll keep you up to date uh, as that progresses. Uh, If you're watching this before Sunday morning and you haven't heard by now, we are going to be offering communion between the hours of 9 a.m. and noon this coming Sunday in 20-minute increments, and uh, we'll only be meeting with 10 people or less to keep within the guidelines of our government. If you'd like to participate, we'd invite you to uh, give me a call or contact me by email. My email address is dan.schneider, S-C-H-N-E-I-D-E-R, at stjohnglendale.com. And my cell phone number is 414-614-7126. Love to be able to serve you that way. And if you uh, didn't get this before Sunday and you'd like to set up some other time later in the week, we can make arrangements for that as well. May God bless your week as you can continue to live in the new identity that he's given to you and the absolute security you have because of who you are.